Hey guys, welcome to Pop Survival Guide. Today I'm going to be talking about the active standing test. So like the tilt table test, the active standing test is a diagnostic test for POTS. So the tilt table test is a lot more commonly used. However, recent research has shown that the active standing test is just as accurate in diagnosing POTS. So today I'm gonna to show you a few ways that the standing test might be useful for you, um, even beyond just diagnosing POTS. And I'm also gonna show you how to do it yourself at home. Since a lot of doctors aren't very familiar with POTS, a lot of people really struggle to get an accurate diagnosis of what's causing their symptoms. A lot of people will be told that, you know, the symptoms are in their head. There's nothing physically wrong with you, it's all psychological. You have anxiety, you have depression. And those things are serious issues, but with POTS, there is a physical, physiological component. And just getting psychiatric treatment isn't gonna get rid of your POTS. So it's really crucial to get an accurate diagnosis. The problem is a lot of the symptoms of POTS are pretty subjective. You know, you say, I feel lightheaded, I feel tired. And a lot of those things can't exactly be measured in a doctor's office. So a lot of people will go for years and years without getting an accurate diagnosis. If you're going through that process and you think you might have POTS, the standing test can be a really empowering tool. It gives you some physical evidence that you can point to. You can bring it into your doctor and say, look, there is something physical going on with me. It's not just in my head. So even if you already have been diagnosed with POTS, the standing test can still be really helpful for you. I've used it as a tool to help me kind of measure my recovery. It helps you put data onto how you feel and give you a sense of how your body is recovering. So for example, if I was trying a new treatment, like a new supplement or a new exercise regimen, I would use the standing test to kind of measure how that treatment was affecting me. So I would take the standing test a couple times a day for a week or two weeks and I could track day by day how my POTS symptoms were improving. So there are a few different ways of performing the standing test, but I'm just going to tell you guys the way that I've been using um, and you can modify it if you want. Uh, but this has been the way that's most effective for me. So you want to lay down in a completely flat position for 10 minutes. I usually watch some TV or listen to some music um, just to make the time go by better. And I'd set a little timer on my phone uh, to let me know when 10 minutes is up. After 10 minutes of laying flat, you want to take your pulse. Now you can either do this with um, a smartwatch or a heart rate monitor, uh, have a friend or family member take your pulse, or there are some good videos on YouTube showing you how to take your own pulse. So after taking your pulse lying down, you want to carefully stand up and set your timer for 3 minutes and 10 minutes. If you're able, you want to stay standing relatively still for the full 10 minutes. And you're going to take your pulse at the 3 minute mark and again at the 10 minute mark. So once you're done with the measurements, you're going to have to do a little math. Um, so you're going to take your 10 minute standing heart rate and subtract your supine or your laying down heart rate. So if you're between the ages of 12 and 19, and the difference between your two heart rates is greater than 40 beats per minute, then you meet diagnostic criteria for POTS. If you're over 19, and the difference between your heart rates is 30 beats per minute or greater, then you meet the diagnostic criteria for POTS. Or if you're any age, and your heart rate exceeds 120 beats per minute in general, that also might meet diagnostic criteria for POTS. So if you have the variety of POTS where you faint upon standing, you probably shouldn't attempt the standing test. Um, it's more designed for people who you know, do feel lightheaded and do feel worse upon standing, but don't necessarily pass out every time they stand up. So if you think that this standing test might be dangerous for you, I urge you not to try it, or maybe to try it with you know, a friend or family member present so that they can make sure that you stay safe. So it's super important for me to stress that I am not a doctor. Um, just because you do this test at home and you think you meet diagnostic criteria for POTS does not mean that you have an official diagnosis for POTS. There are some errors, sometimes there are flukes in what your heart rate does. Um, so whatever you do, consult your doctor. But I think that this can just give you an important piece of data um, and hopefully it can help you in figuring out what's going on with you whether it be figuring out if POTS is the correct diagnosis for you or figuring out what treatments are effective for you. Um, so I'm not trying to give medical advice per se, I am just trying to give you some tools that you can use 
things to help yourself figure out how to recover. But that being said, I hope that you do find the standing test to be a useful tool for you, and I wish you the best of luck in your recovery.